Hey, we're live again. What's up, Em? How are you doing? Hi. How's my awesome co-host tonight? I'm good. You're good? You have to talk into the mic, huh? I'm good. What are you reading? The same book. So Em reads Max's story every night. Uh, just so you know, she that's the only book she reads upstairs, like right here while we're while we're filming. So uh, cool. Hey, welcome to Pick Rep. I'm joined by Pete. We're waiting on Mark right now. Um, you should be popping in anytime soon. So I have Pete Turner with me as my special co-host, co as usual. And then I have my awesome nightly co-host, Amelia. Amelia is nine years old, and she's just an awesome co-host. So here we go. Um, in case anything ever goes off the hook, off the rails, gets a little off the books, um, M can't hear anything till later on. But I'm going to bring in Pete. There Since M is not on, I'm gonna get out my swears now. Fuck shit, goddamn. Cock. Do it. Get them God, all shit, out. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, brother? Oh so man, I, I have a feeling the same thing happened with Mark this time as last time. Mark and Pete are both on California time, and it's tough getting these schedules locked in. So it's it's interesting times, man. So what's going on today, man? How you doing out there in California? Good, busy working on projects, getting things done. I'm I'm writing a course uh, for podcasters or would be podcasters on interview technique because, as you know, as a collector, that stuff is uh, it's anybody can have a conversation, but to mm -hmm. host a conversation, to guide it, it's a different thing. And what Pete's talking about is interview and interrogation techniques, whether that's for the military or for law enforcement. And it all comes down to a lot of it is knowing what you're doing. You can't just jump into a conversation and expect to elicit a response, a valid response. And Pete's kind of an expert that he's been doing it for decades. Yeah. Like, how do you get to what's interesting? Okay. You and I had a conversation, but did you as a host enrich it for yourself, for the audience, for your, especially for your guest, you know? So that, I'm working on getting that all sorted out. Hopefully get that launched. I don't know, maybe this summer, maybe sooner to put the Corona thing. I've got a lot of time to work on these back burner projects became front burner projects, you know? You know what? We were going to talk about movies, but let's talk about something interesting, like interview and interrogation, brother. Okay. And uh, so, uh, you know, when I got back from the war in 06, I went to work for a uh, an interrogation cell. Well, you know, an interview type thing for the uh, Guantanamo Bay investigations. Right. Did that for a little bit. And the interview and interrogation techniques taught to us were a lot different than a regular like read technique where, you know, you're going to go out here and try to build a porn build uh, to elicit responses. A lot of time people forget about cultural aspects of mm. interview and interrogation. So what, what's your thoughts on that? Is that kind of where your, uh, your advanced type uh, proxy is for this upcoming lectures and books? Yeah. I, I, that's part of it is, is like realizing that the time frame you have, like, I, I don't know that there are many people on the planet that are more versed in an immediate hour long conversation with an unknown person than I am. You know I mean? I've just done it in the most dangerous places in the world. And that's really what a podcast often is, is a conversation, an immediate conversation where you have to establish instant rapport and trust. I, I just, you know, those kind of skill sets they're very rare. It, and if you just try to have a conversation, um, it's difficult. So for someone who's trying to get into this game, I wanted to sort of show them the, the tools and everything else. The cultural aspect is critical to understand and, and culture. Look, I, I'm a cultural expert. So I'll, here's what I'll tell you. Culture is not, I'm Italian, you're French. How do we get along? Culture is everywhere. It's everything. It's, culture is like gravity. And if you don't account for it, it will get its share. You just didn't know it was doing it. You know, this is a great time for Mark to jump in. Hold on here, Everybody, I'd like to welcome a very, very special guest. Mark's been on the Protectors podcast, but I want to give you a quick background, but the bottom line up front about Mark. He has been um, stalwart in the, the movie industry for, for decades now, but before that, he was a graduate of West Point, and he was also a military officer. So we have, you know, and he also has his own podcast. West Point, and he was also a military officer. So, yeah. so let's welcome Mark. What's going on, Mark? Hey, Jason Horry, man. I'm doing great, brother. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I just caught the tail end of what Pete was saying. He taught me everything I know about, <laughs> <laughs> about culture and uh, talking to people, establishing an immediate rapport. And um, yeah, I just want to take a chance to thank you, Pete, for being my podcast mentor. Oh, man. That's 
That's big praise. Mark takes things and instantly can apply them. I remember we were talking one time about one aspect and he instantly had it down. He is an out and out pro at implementing uh, whatever is like provided to him. I, I love it. Well, and I do have to give Mark props. When I had him on a podcast, it was audio only, and we started talking. Um, all of a sudden, we pinged into the old interview and interrogation and the spy crafts and all that. And little do um, probably a lot of people don't know, but Mark has his own podcast, The Live Drop, and it's all about like cool spy casts and all the other good stuff, a lot of Cold War stuff. And you can hear him taking notes in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. it Mark, amazing. how you how you doing out there, man? How's it going in I'm California? Good. I'm good. Um, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful day for a pandemic. The weather has <laughs> been fantastic. It's crisp. It's cool. There's less smog in the air. There's less uh, traffic. So uh, the weather's been wonderful. And where are you? Or can you? I'm out here in DC area, and you know where Pete's at. He's probably right up the road there. I'm just and, down oh, the road yeah. from Mark. Yep. Where are you, Pete? I'm down by Disney. Like in, really? In Tustin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh! I thought you meant Disney Studios. Oh, you're down. In oh, no, no, no. That there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, hey, Mark. We have my my special guest host every night is Amelia Piccolo. She's nine. She just hangs out, reads books, and she'll ask you some questions later on. She's not. Uh, she can't hear what's going on. So we, if we ever go off the books, uh, she's good. But she also <laughs> has a mouth of a sailor, so don't mind her. Oh, great. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Mark, how is this, how is this uh, pandemic treating you? How are you keeping your spirits up? Uh, how are you keeping busy? And, and just kind of in general, that's kind of one of the reasons we have this pick rep show going on is getting a positive message out there. Well, I think uh, one of the things about um, this pandemic and, you know, the, the social, I haven't really maintained any social distance because, uh, you know, ever since I started podcasting and then I would do interviews for the Venda Museum as well, I'm sort of used to this, uh, you know, kind of establishing rapport remotely with people and talking, <laughs> talking, to, talking to screens or just talking to voices. So um, I've been pretty busy um, just doing some podcast interviews and trying to find time to edit them together because it seems like a lot of people have time to sit down and talk now. So that's one way I've been doing it. Another way is uh, um, some exercise. I got a little rowing machine that I set out on the patio. Um if I get a little stir crazy and knitting, I've got my knitting out. I'm working on a scarf right now and I'm almost finished. So <laughs> that's so my, I'm just kind of keeping up with family and, um, and friends and, you know, just kind of trying to, trying to be there for everybody while this is happening. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you had a lot, you were from the East coast originally, right? Yes. Upstate New York. So, you know, I'll listen to governor Cuomo and uh, very inspirational, uh, informative, kind of talking about the situation out there i have um yeah my father lives uh in northern new york state and uh, i have a sister up there as well and some extended family yeah it's my brother's in jersey and most of my family's down south now um so yeah the east coast is it's a little bit different right now and it's uh social distancing is it's it's different because you know working in dc dc is like a ghost town now and now all the national monuments are are closed off and we're just keeping ourselves busy. And that's why we started the show. And I'm like, Hey, I got my daughter. We do our TikToks in the morning, this cheesy videos. And, uh, just, you know, just trying to keep, keep our, uh, internal sanity, our mental health up. Are you doing any teaching? Are you doing your homeschooling? Uh, we start next week. We have a curriculum coming out. Uh, we just started going into quarantine, quarantine about a week and a half ago. So okay. right now the, the schools are just trying to catch up. So it, it's it's very interesting. <laughs> How about you, Pete? Uh, just like you, Mark, you know, it's uh, there's a lot more people with a lot more time. Um, you know, is this sorry to interrupt? I, I do interrupt a lot. This is a typical thing when you get other guys that have podcasts. They start like That's, I was thinking the same exactly. See who's going to be the host? <laughs> you know, <it's>, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's see, let's see who's going to be the host? Go. <laughs> I was like, you know, Mark. I was thinking to say, hold on a second. A new, Pete. I was thinking the same thing. Kind of arm wrestling thing. It's like who is going to host this interview with three hosts? 
I'm just going to do the Vin Scully, and I'm just going to shut up and let the crowd do the talking. So go ahead. <laughs> nice. I was going to say, I'll give the mic over to M. I was yeah. thinking, I'm like, how, we're never going to get anything. We're never going to talk about anything. All, all of us want to just ask questions. I just <laughs> dropped a stitch. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> me off. That's awesome, man. But yeah, to answer no. your question, Mark, just a lot of podcasting, a lot of production. I'm actually working on a project that I want to get off my uh, off my desk, and then I want to pitch you on a project. Sure. Um, that I have in mind that I think you you would dig and uh, do it in podcast form, or maybe web series, you know. But let me get the other one off my table first. I've got so much going on. You know how this goes. There's more projects than I have capacity to produce. Yeah, yeah. You've always got a lot of cool stuff cooking. <laughs> And that's what's funny about I was just thinking about this whole podcasting thing is we're all like uh we're so audio. So I'm always like looking down, Mark's looking down, Pete's looking down, we're all looking down. And I'm like, I gotta remember we're on video. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Hey, I'm looking at the camera. No, no, it's funny because I do the same thing. I'm always like, hey, and what are you doing? I'm like, oh hey, well, I was up, trying to push the show out, you know. You gotta push the show out. Hey Mark, um Man, I just totally lost. Well, I have a so question for Mark. Of, they just want to say, hey, hey, man. Hey, Mark. <laughs> hey, I, I have a question for Mark since I'm co-hosting. Yeah. Uh, so you've been doing the Vendi interviews. By the way, everybody should check out the Vendi Museum. It's W-E-N-D-E. Uh, what have you learned now? You, I know you're passionate about, especially Cold War era spycraft. What have you learned? Because it's been a couple of years now you've been exploring this topic. Yes, we, we do interviews for a historical witness project um, sponsored by Fiona Shalom, Joel Aronovitz. And um, they aren't, uh, there's a couple of them that are online at thevendamuseum.org. But yeah, I'm, I'm really just an interviewer. I go in and sit down and ask a series of questions. And I guess one thing I've learned about it is, is probably more as a host or, or listener. I mean, you can read about the history of, um, you know, Eastern Europe and, you know, what, what the big events were, but um, well, I guess well, a, couple, a couple of ways. One, as an interviewer, I found that what's most interesting with that is to let, is to kind of empower people to say, this is your story, you know, and we want to hear it and to kind of guide the questions along like that. And I think that has more to do with, um, you know, people giving like an account, almost like a life story for archival purposes. That seems to be the best way of um, interviewing people. But in terms of like the content that I'm getting and what I'm learning from it is that uh, it's starting to sound like they're less um, kind of different than us. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is, but you start hearing these things over and over again and you realize, Oh, wow. That's they really didn't have it, you know, on a personal level um, to, to the, in a personal level, it feels like people are much more understandable and much more, um, much more relatable than it was when I first started doing it, I suppose. How did you get into this whole, I mean, we talked about it in the uh, Protectors podcast, but how did you get into the uh, the Cold War spycraft intelligence world? Because um, if, if I recall, your, your commissioning wasn't quite intel, was it? No, it wasn't Before. intelligence at all. It, um, yeah, I, I was... Uh, I, how was that? I don't, I don't really know. I think more recently it was, I was working, just doing some research and I thought it was pretty cool and I did some research and wrote a pilot and some research at the Vendor Museum and talked to some people who'd been in the intelligence, mostly army intelligence guys in Berlin while I was there. And I realized, wow, there's a lot happening that I didn't really know about. And it was more just a curiosity. Um, yeah, I find, I find no matter how I answer this question, people are a little bit disappointed when I tell them, when I don't say I was a spy, <laughs> you know, so um, I, I guess the only thing I want to say to that is that, you know, you can, you can be interested in things if it wasn't necessarily part of your, you know, part of your job or, or part of your history. But that said, when I was in Berlin um, during the cold war, uh, yeah, there was times where people, because I was into languages and I could speak some French and German where people kind of assumed that I was, um, <laughs> intelligence and really I was just you know a, a curious uh, engineer trying to meet as many people as I could so um, sure <laughs> and then they, One you, thing I, you say you weren't doing it and it's like yeah you're an engineer great uh -huh. yep yeah. now let me, let me tell mean? you something I think I think a lot of collectors the core collectors later on in life later on in like intelligence law enforcement everything came from a different background 
rather yeah. than just straight right. Intel straight, yeah. because a lot yeah. of, it seems like a lot of uh, Intel based people are very introverted. So there's really not a lot of human type collection out there. So for everybody out there, you know, human is human intelligence, human intelligence, and you really need to be able to talk to people to gather it. Yeah. I found, I found, especially in Blender in the cold, if I told people I was an engineer, it was much more disarming, you know, and people would be much more willing to talk to you when I would just say, yes, you know, here, here's, here's what I do as opposed to trying to be mysterious about it, because frankly, that could only get you into trouble back then, you know, unless you actually were working for the agency or one of those other units, it could only get you in trouble if you started getting curious about that or asking people about this or trying to find out secrets. So I just tried to avoid it. But now I'm really into it. Now there's so many different, there's a few different podcasts. There's Spyberry, Cold War Conversations. These guys are, have become friends of mine. And um, the Dry Cleaner cast is another great one. So it's just turned in, of course, Pete's podcast yeah. focuses on it quite quite often. And Pete's got the that experience as well. So um, have you had uh, Fred Burton on yet? No. Uh, oh, Fred's yeah. great. Fred. Fred's Fred. And great. Sam Cat. Yeah. Sam Katz is. He's not a spy per se, but he's uh, like you. He's a chronicler of of overseas collection activity. He's really neat. A chronicler, I like that. <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny, Mark. You You're make your business card. Tell, yeah, <laughs> chronicler. When I tell people that I'm a spy, they often don't believe me either, right? So it goes the other direction. Like, no, really, that's this is what I did. To like, yeah, come on, you were probably an engineer. <laughs> so, Do you play cards, Pete? Do you ever play poker? Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 pretty decent, except for like I guess really good people who know the math and stuff. But I'm I'm all right. Yeah, I'm terrible at it. I mean, I, people always think that I'm lying. They always think I'm bluffing, <laughs> <laughs> which I guess is a tell in a way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that has to do with anything. But the only reason why I'm good at cards, Mark, is that I just play the good cards. You know. Yeah. That's You're it. one of those guys. Yeah, right. eighty percent of the eighty percent of the hands get folded. You know, remember that. Yep. And then and if you then, stick to that mantra, I, man. Yeah, and I'm hopefully, like when I bet big, I typically bet in the same pattern, so that when I am bluffing, you just assume that I have a really good hand. And so, like, I, two out of ten bets, you know, I, I'm I'm probably bluffing, but I want those two out of ten might come through two different nights of gambling. You know. Right. Right. Not very often that I bet. Mark, what do you got going on in the acting world now? Oh God, what a sad question to ask right now. <laughs> I mean, what do you got in the? Uh, I thought there was a show about positivity. Why don't we, are we asking me about? <laughs> what do you got in the? Um, <laughs> later on, post COVID, do you have any have any any projects or anything? Because I you know, know you like to direct. We're, and, we're on a show that was really fun. It was on CBS. It's called Blood and Treasure. It was a yeah, a summer, I saw that summer series last year. It was really fun. I played. Um, I played the father of the lead who he finds out in this season was actually an Air America pilot, like a helicopter pilot. Oh, wow. So I was doing a little bit of research on it. We were shooting in Thailand in February. So I was doing some research on it, and that led to my last interview on the live drop with a um, Air America pilot, Neil Hansen. But that was a lot of fun. It was with a, uh, a showrunner, um, uh, Steven Skaya, who'd worked on Human Target. It was a show that I'd done before. And uh, – that was good. It was action, a little tongue in cheek humor with some kind of, you know, kind of an interesting father son relationship. So I worked on that. We didn't finish it. I actually went back in March and showed up. And then I, I was there for like two days. They said, oh, they shut down production. So I had to fly back oh, like, on the 16th or 17th. But, oh. but that was fun. I had a few other jobs lined up. There's one other one that I'm, I'm looking into now. And it's, uh, it's a biopic about this guy named Dean Reed. And he was called the Red Elvis. He was doing the 60s and 70s. He was a. I love Dean Reed. You're great. I love that you're talking about this. Oh, good. You know that. You know what I'm talking you about. You told me about him, and I looked him up, and I love him. Yeah, yeah. I interviewed his daughter um, uh, at the museum at one point, and there's a production company that's made Talos Films that's um, looking at making a um, kind of a film about a certain part of his life. I mean, have you heard of him before, Jason? He was like an American singer songwriter, really politically active a little bit before his time and he no, ended up not yet. he ended up um you know demonstrating for you know allende down in chile down in the 70s but he ultimately ended up going to russia doing a concert there they loved him he ended up moving to east berlin and just became this american uh you know pop star in residence more or less until he died under somewhat mysterious circumstances like in the mid 80s but um 
yeah, there's going to be a movie about him, and I'd like to play him. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, oh, I like that you bring up Germany. I, uh, you know, and since we're, since a podcast, I actually went over to Germany for Oktoberfest. Uh, just did a couple days in Oktoberfest, but got to travel all over the place. And uh, I'm absolutely, you know, not to shift topics off of act or anything, but man, once anybody mentions Germany, I'm like, I'm ready to go back. I uh, wait, you went to Oktoberfest recently? Uh, yeah, this not um, what's it? When did I go? September? Yeah, this September, past September. It was, uh, I haven't been to that in year. I remember going to that. Oh my gosh. It was incredible. We, uh, my friend and I ended up going all these, uh, like a British, like right up the road from there is a, a, a monastery that makes incredible beer. And we ended up hiking miles and, you know, this is the first time I've hiked in years and I didn't even care. And then we, uh, we went over to, uh, see the Eagle's nest and that was incredible yeah. too, man. I'm Wait, I might have hiked to the same place. I still have a beer. I still have a beer stein from it. Do you want to see it? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so it's funny because when you go to Germany, a lot of the monasteries still make beer, and it is yeah. almost. It's always worth the trip, even if the beer wasn't great. It's all great, by the way. Uh, it's just such a neat experience. So anytime you can climb to the top of a hill and go to a monastery and drink monk I, beer. I, I took my platoon on a hike one time up a hill and uh, it was snowing. They're like, oh, what's this crazy lieutenant got us doing? And um, we got oh to the top of the place. What is it? Cluster Brower Eye, Kreuzberg, Rhone. I'll have to take a look and see. Is that the place? It I don't know. looks almost like I have to take a look because it, you know, we're walking, walking, and walking, and all of a sudden you come to the back of it and it looks like an old fort. And then, you know, there's like a, a shrine over here, there's a shrine over there. It's, it was amazing. And then walking back was kind of fun after having a few beers. Yeah, we could, we had to stop because else there would probably would have been some Article 15s. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Can you imagine, Mark, giving some guy uh, an Article 15 that you took him on a trip and he gets in trouble because you got him hammered? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, gosh. I'm going to have you. Why, there's probably why there wasn't an Article 15. <laughs> 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 yeah exactly oh man you've done stuff with the spy museum too right mark um no with uh one in uh, washington definitely yeah they have a uh, kind of link you up with those guys if, if uh, thomas or uh, fred if any of you guys are out there listening try to link up mark with that because the spy museum is great man they have inc they have a great podcast too the spy cast and uh you know and that's what i tell people you don't have to be a spy to like just enjoy spy craft and, and everything that goes with it. Um, yeah, it's sort, of, sort of been a portal to, you know, look at, you know, culture, national security, international mm -hmm. relations, diplomacy. It's, it's just been a, it's, it's not really necessarily about the trade craft, right? It's about. Um, yes. Information. Um, and that's the thing is I'm giving Fred a lot of props and Thomas, I got to give you props for your book. Uh, Thomas is Thomas Bacora. Uh, the Guardian book, very good. It sh from, shows it from a different perspective. Um, oh, yeah, I interviewed Tom. Actually. Yeah, wonderful yeah, book. Yeah, he's been on all three of our shows, man. It's awesome. So, Tom, hey, brother. Tom. Uh, but Fred, Fred, Tom, all all these guys have great stories and got to get them on your show. And their books are very well-written nonfiction books. Because um, you get into it. You get into the culture. You get into – when I get the, the light bulb moment of like, huh, I never thought about it that way. Or, hey, you know, I was growing up in a, the 70s and 80s, and ah, I didn't know that was going on at the same time. It's very cool. Yeah, the nonfiction. I know what you mean about the nonfiction books. There's that added realization you get every once in a while. Like, wow, this actually really happened. <laughs> you know? And uh, it sort of pulls me into the story a little more. Another guy I just interviewed is Cody Peron. He just wrote a book called Agents Unknown. I think I mentioned him to you, Pete. But um, he worked for the... Um, Diplomatic security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All these all these acronyms with you guys. I know, man. DSS. <laughs> I wanted to do this OSS. thing on my show, which was like acronym, like acronym salad or something. Just like make up acronyms and see, you know, see if they actually were <laughs> Lexicon, lexicon salad. Like the SRQ. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man. So um one other thing, you brought up the Berlin Wall. So I work down here in DC. And I work by the Reagan International Building. And as I go in and out of my parking garage, they have a section of the Berlin Wall there. And you have to see, is it do not touch? But every day I'm like, there's a Berlin Wall. There's a Berlin Wall. Like, it's really cool, man. 
that's my that, that's my exciting touristy stuff there. Yeah, the Berlin Wall. Have you guys watched the documentary Tiger King? Not yet. Good. I'm <laughs> saving it. I'm saving it. Yeah. Oh, not Tiger Land, Tiger King. Oh, yeah, I did a uh, spoof of that the other day. We're watching that this week. You have to, man. It's Netflix. It's home. Yeah. And, and it shows <laughs> nuts. I kept thinking it was Florida, but it's like Oklahoma, right? Yeah. Yeah. The reason I said it is because he's always talking about tigers and talking about tigers and, you know, kind of selling himself as this Tiger King. And I, I thought, man, it's sort of something we have to do when we're doing a podcast, whatever your, whatever your story was or whatever your podcast. Mm -hmm. about, you know, there's a certain amount of salesmanship that you, that you have to do yeah. that has to do with your own personal story as well. And, uh, yeah, it was nice to see something completely off of uh, what I was expecting, you know? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, man. It's like I, there's like certain we, – we both do it. Pete with the spy. Mark, you're an actor and a military vet. And me, you know, there's more to my life, more to my almost 50 years than just being a, uh, you know, a federal agent and – and new podcaster. So, I mean, let's, hear about, to, let's hear about some of it. We got some time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, you know, there's this time back in, you got to read the book, man. Where's my book? I'll send you. Where's my book? Go me grab my book. <laughs> hey, you could read. If anybody wants to know who I am, it's Unwavering by Jason Piccolo, a border agent story. Available now at cost on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Unwavering. Yeah, man, I'll send you a copy. But you worked on the Southern border? Or northern border yeah too. southern border back in the uh, early 2000s i was a border patrol agent and then i was a custom special agent and then uh later on i worked for ice for a bit and then i uh yeah man uh dod for a while uh just hit 20 plus years now so almost done well thanks for your service yeah, man. thank you brother hey now comes to the best part of the show this is where we bring amelia part. into it am you ready for your questions babe Get a mic her up here. She's like, Dad, come on. I'm reading this book. You're only supposed to go 20 minutes. There you go. You got your questions, son? Best. That was the best rule because you didn't have to worry about people smoking. Um, my favorite role was probably when I played Bobby Kennedy in a TNT movie called um, Wallace about George Wallace. So. That was fun. I got to research uh, Robert Kennedy and do a couple scenes with Gary Sinise. Ah, I got to get Gary on the show. But, um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> what was your other question? Yeah, hey, you can ask me. Um, what were your three favorite movies you were in? My or three, TV shows. Three favorite movies or TV shows. Um, I really liked Zero Dark Thirty. I was in the very end of that. Um, supposed to be, I, I was actually had two roles. If you look closely, I was also flying a helicopter, and then at the end, I'm flying like <laughs> like a C-141. So I don't know. I don't know how that worked. <laughs> they must have, must have been a very good pilot, you know. But um, what else did I did I like? I liked a movie called The Siege, and um, yeah. What other TV shows? And uh, yeah, this last show I've done. Um, Blood and Treasure on CBS. Um, keep an eye out for that. That's yeah, we're going to watch that. You know, I'm going to bring that one up. And then we have the question we ask everybody. So this is this is pre-COVID. This is pre-anything. doesn't have to do with your life because we know about the butterfly effect. We've already healed Hitler. We've killed Hitler. And one, people have done a bunch of other stuff. So here's the question. If you could go back in time, what would you change? Oh my God, this kid just blew my mind. So she's sitting there like watching, thinking about questions that's going to make your head explode. Nicely done, Amelia. I think you got a, a good co a good co host. Yep. I um, do. If I could change anything, what, what would it be? Oh my God. Yeah, I'm going to have to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough one. I I haven't been asked that one, and I have no idea. So good luck with that, Mark. I don't know. The only thing that comes to mind, I was thinking of it's it's the Spanish conquistadors. I think they really gave the Mexicans a raw deal. 
like way back, yeah. way back then. That's one thing I would definitely, you know, if I look back at it and I think, you know, I think we could have done that a little better. <laughs> Em's had enough. She's out. She's had enough of you. All Bye. right. Thank Bye. you. I am. <laughs> okay. Now comes the tough questions, Mark. Yeah. What have, how many, when did you start knitting and, uh, what, what's the production rate here? Oh, production rate. Well, I should be, I'm, I, I'm thinking, God, I should be knitting masks, but I mean, I don't think they'd really. I don't, I don't really, think that would really help. Yeah, I don't think what I could. What do you got going on down there? So I got a little uh, scarf going on. It's a kind of a rough oh, okay. color, you know. It's uh, it's called a dot stitch. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. Yep. Pete knows. Yeah, I uh, I tried to take up knitting a while back, and I learned like all of the basic things. Oh, you did? Cool. Yeah. yeah, scarves are pretty easy to make. You just get like these one these little. Uh... What do you make, Pete? Uh, I was trying to make like uh, hats because I was in Afghanistan. It was cold, so I thought I would knit around. And yeah. just Knit them up, but um, you know, I, I had other things to do. I just, <laughs> I just I'm like, why am I spending ten hours making a hat when I can buy one for ten dollars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at it, you look at you look at the amount of cost for the wool and put everything together. It's you know, it's not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand why people do it, but there's certain things that are just done, like the rotisserie chicken for seven bucks at the store. I'm like, I, yeah, I, you know, it's so much more efficient for me just to buy the damn thing already cooked and not screwed up. You You're know, right. for seven bucks to buy a raw chicken is like five fifty. So <laughs> And then you gotta you pull know, it uh, out of it and then put other stuff in it and then oh it's just such yeah. a and yeah. then run the oven to the tune of I don't know four or five bucks to cook it and like now you're behind on money and yeah. So yeah. Yeah, but then you but care there's something sad about carrying that chicken home, you know? <laughs> I always feel like I've skipped some essential part of life. Or <laughs> being or being like uh I don't know, you feel like you should be cooking with people. I bring I bring that chicken home by myself. It's like uh Oh, I thought uh, you meant like you didn't kill it. Like I was gonna say, hey, let's go to the chicken farm and you and I can be neck ringers for one day and we'll 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 pay the front end of the cost, you know. Yeah, you know, okay. I mean without you know, draw the little line in the ground in the sand so the chicken <laughs> stares at it and then I mean there's uh, a whole process of you know, plucking you guys together. are rough. For, for my vegan, for my vegan friends out there, I'm sorry. When you think about it, like all the work that goes into somebody cooking a chicken, and putting it together, and like I, I usually complain about the juice on the bottom because if you don't pack it just right, it kind of slides out into the bag, then it drips out, and then it gets on everything, and it's all greasy, and you can't clean it up. Anyway, we're uh, knitting. Uh, I started when I quit smoking, like 13. That's years a good ago. thing. Yeah, because I the need needles I have are about the same sizes of cigarettes, I guess, and huh. they ended up with uh, something for me to do. Well, nice. gentlemen, I really appreciate the. I used to knit hats for soldiers in Afghanistan. I'm surprised Pete never got one. Oh, what kid? <laughs> that would have been funny as hell. I used to send hey, uh, Pete. I know they were busy. <laughs> you can knit one for my buddy uh, RJ that just chimed in and said, "Yo, Pete, he uh, he's a Kurdish guy who I've worked with in the uh, in the desert before, and it gets cold out there. That. So, oh yeah, what up, what up, RJ? Hey, he's RJ. good people. Yeah, they have they have like their own hats out there. I thought their hats were always. I mean, that's a pretty important piece of your toolkit, isn't it? Your hat. Oh man, yeah. I'd rather have a hat than a jacket, because for me, it goes hat, jacket, and then other stuff. You know, that's the order I like put them. Like toilet paper. Like if somebody had like mortars on your tent, like at the at some point you could have been running out of there with just a hat on. Yeah, it's yeah, for sure. Timed it. <laughs> uh, check out handmade for us will do brother oh nice yeah yeah there's a uh there's a big there's a, a non-profit out there called op gratitude that does a lot of uh like they knit those uh the survival bands for leos for military for everybody well gentlemen i think we hit the point man we've got uh 34 minutes i think that was a good show that was fun guys thanks for having yeah, me thanks man yeah. Tomorrow night I have the uh the great Jennifer Marshall. So if you're if you're watching now, Jennifer, we'll talk to you tomorrow. And uh, and Mark, when we get a chance, you Scotty and I gotta get together and uh, throw down a pot or two. Let's do it. Yeah, we need it. We're due for a debrief. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Awesome. Okay, gentlemen, if you hold on the air for one quit.
and I'm going to uh, just give a quick shout out to everybody here. So just give me a second. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight on Pick Rep with Mark Valley and Pete Turner. It was a great show. Nice to just sit back, talk for a little while, and just vent about anything. Not even really vent, just chat. That's what the show is about. It's Pick Rep. Zero politics. Give you about 20, 25, 30 minutes to just get out there talk. I'll be streaming live with my awesome co-host, Amelia. Sometimes I'll have a special co-host like Pete join me in. And, uh, you know, Mark would probably be a very good co-host because he really likes to ask questions, too. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> I appreciate everybody out there. Join us every night until this is over with. So seven days a week, 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you, everybody.